These are the Black Hills of Dakota. The Sioux Indians named this land. It is their word for friendly. There are seven warrior tribes in the Sioux Nation. And I have prayed that Dakota and its hills would be too rough for the white man and his flock. But once again, the white man comes. I watch them coming with a sad heart. There are few now. But I know that many will come, for they seek the white man's treasure. Oh, I am sitting alone, the leader of the Sioux Nation. My people are spread to the far corners of our land. This is Crazy Horse, my warrior chief. children need for the journey to the Rosebud. Save our fighting braves for the real wars. When the deer run, does the wolf pack hide? The wise leader eats when he can. He builds strength for the day when he must fight. To live. Jumped our wagon. Minutes ago. Get out there, soldier. They're looting our wagon. Attack them. What are you waiting for? Are you the leader of these hay finders? We're honest prospectors. What are you doing in Indian territory? Minding our own business. You left the fort. You were told to go either east or south. So we took the wrong road. Now you're going to chase them Indians or aren't you? It was a raid for food, Major. They're Sioux. All right. You men follow us back to the fort. What the hell? Are you, you going to let them go? Yes. I'll drive a hard case against you, soldier. And I'll drive my fist down your throat if you open your mouth again. Get back to the end of the column. Hurry up! Keep those scissor bills in our dust all the way back to the fort.
speak to your general about this. Go ahead. What's the matter, Bob? In trouble again? Me? <laughs> what gives you that idea? How many men did you lose? None. Two wounded. We lost all our supplies, Colonel Custer. Major Parrish reporting, sir. I'll talk to you later on, Mr. O'Connor. Just so you talk to him first. Well, Major? That man and his bunch were in Sioux territory. My orders were to ride patrol for just such a violation of the Indian Treaty. An officer, Major, is supposed to be able to exercise a certain amount of initiative. As a member of my regiment, I issued you your orders. I did not set them in concrete. And my head isn't set in concrete either. For the sake of a bunch of ragtail prospectors that could have ridden the whole command into an ambush. Give me the full report, Major. Those people use this fort to buy their supplies in. Then they line their teeth about where they're going. They go into Sioux territory and slaughter their game, foul their water, and shoot every Indian they see, if he's old or harmless enough, in the trees. They don't mean anything to him. They're just words on paper. Admitting every word of that to be true, it's outside your province as a soldier. We are all here to obey orders. And orders seem to be something of a stumbling block for you. Major, you've been a burr under my saddle ever since you came west. You were an aide to General Grant when I first knew you, a colonel. Now you seem to be traveling downwards in rank. Well, we seem to be traveling the same direction, Colonel Custer. You used to be a general. Gentlemen. That's enough. Colonel Custer has suggested an assignment for you, Major. You're going back where Sioux Raiders aren't likely to bother you. The assignment is the Red Rock Agency. Red Rock. Period of duty is one year. Refuse the assignment, and I suggest you turn in your resignation. You'll pull out tomorrow, Major. Relieve the troop at the agency, police the Indians there. Any questions? No, sir. And thank you, sir. You're out of circulation, will do him good. If anything, will, sir. Oh, excuse me, Colonel. I want to have a little talk with Kathy before he comes over to see her. Maybe you'd better, sir. If she makes him your son-in-law, I don't envy either of them. I was listening. I heard what you had to say to Colonel Custer. Uh, go ahead and say it. I failed you again. It's not me you failed, Bob. It's yourself. Look, I know Red Rock isn't exactly what I had planned for our There'll honeymoon. be no honeymoon, Bob. Our engagement is finished. Well, good. Good. I don't like long engagements either. When do we get married? We're not getting married. I've made up my mind. We're through. Yeah, Kathy, you're just upset. I'm not upset. And I want you to listen to me. The man I marry has to do more than just love me. He has to place our future together, our happiness, above everything else. All I need is a chance. Chance? You've had a thousand chances. Why, you could be commanding a regiment right now. Is it discipline that galls you? Is it lack of action? What? Maybe I've got a few plans that don't suit these blue-bellied patriots who like to go around slaughtering Indians just to keep the name in print. This Indian thing has become an obsession with you. Why don't you have Washington handle it? Or quit the army altogether. Quit? And then what? Anything. Dig ditches if you like. <laughs> yes, I dig them with you. So long as you dug the best and the straightest. Oh, Bob, I I'd help you get a start anywhere on earth. But you've got to want to fight your way to the top. To be the best in anything you tackle. It's got to be the best, huh? The man I marry? Yes. And you wouldn't marry me if I was just a rear trooper in the ranks. I'd marry you whatever you were, if that's where you were starting out. A woman wants to be proud of her husband. Where you've been going, why, I'd be a barracks hag all my life. A quick widow.
Here's your ring, Bob. If you ever give one to another woman, put her in your future first in your mind. I had an idea that a girl like you could stand in an Indian agency for a year. You'd still be in the Army. Yes. Yeah, I'd still be in the Army. Goodbye, Bob. You said it all right then. What's your name? No, Savi. We're your friends. We're trying to help you. Where are you from? Agency. Red Rock? Talk to him. Waste la cola. Shokshe. Yo tonke ta tonke. Saltipi huxedant. To tonka yo tonka. The young buffalo. Son of Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull? Better you let him go, Major. Here. Go your way. Let's go find that agency. have been silent for many moons. Our fighting men are scattered to the seven nations. I can only send word of hope to those prisoners. Words? What use of words to people caged like dogs? These people have not lifted a weapon against any man. White agent, order the soldiers to herd them southward, to the swamps. Our people would not go. For this, they are punished and starved. And still you won't make war. I will send them word they're not forgotten. And I will pray to the Great Spirit. Give me a day to rest. I will go back. No. Not your own son, Sitting Bull. Send another. He has suffered enough. It will be the best proof that my father would not forget them. I will go back. Tell them this. 
I will try to make peace with the white man. If that fails, then they will hear our war cries and the shouts of fighting braves. But first, I must call all the chiefs to council. the DeHoyne, huh? What are you running here, Captain? A flop house or an army post? This is Red Rock Agency, sir. The good Lord's gift to the Indians. Well, what's that over there? The stockade. The wind's right about now. Can't you smell it? I want to see it. You better have a drink for it. According to Weber. Who's Weber? He's the agent in charge here. These Indians refused the reservation. They wanted their own home. Well, that's an odd thing for people to want. Weber's been trying to starve them into obedience. Major Parrish reporting, sir. Relieve Captain Swain. I am busy, Major. Please wait. All I want's in order to release food, blankets, and medicine. That I am aimed. Did they send you without your regular military supplies? My supplies are intact. I want it to spread around the Indians out there. Spread around the Indians? All you can spare. You are here to police this agency, Major, and not to run it. But those Indians are dying like dogs. Those Indians are dogs, renegade dogs. They have refused to obey my orders. Get your troops settled, Major. There'll be plenty of time to discuss these matters in the next 12 months. What about That's all, supplies? Major.
chiefs, I have come back to share your troubles until my father can send help. You have come only to share death with us. Tomorrow we try to go from here. Better to die in the open, fighting, than rot like sick dogs in a pen. But the long knives, the soldiers. Some will get through. My father is holding counsel. His advice is to wait. We have waited too long now. You see, we are ready. Go back to your father, young buffalo. Some of your braves could escape as I did and join my father. I'll not leave women and children. And the old and weak of this misery. I will help you make the fires. Oliver Pierce, forward! Hello! I'm glad to see Swain go. Why? Morale was getting low with his troops. Boredom, no doubt. Give your men exercise. Encourage sports. I'll run the military end of it, Mr. Weber. You stick to your business. I was a military man when you were a pup, Major Parrish. In an army where discipline came first. A European army. I thought so. Your orders will be posted at 9 o'clock every morning. What time do you feed those Indians? Once a day, at sunset. Any other questions? No. Oi. Yes, sir. What is that? It's engine feed, sir. Stuff would sicken a hog. For a fact, it would. Taste that. Take it away. Do you expect those Indians out there to eat that? Those Indians are being disciplined. They refuse to march to the railhead for shipment of butter. The government's paying good money for food, blankets, and medicine. Where's it going? I am in charge of this agency, and I'm responsible to the Bureau and not to the Army Major. Taste it. If this is a joke... I'm not trying to be funny. Taste it. I'll have you die. Taste it. Taste it. Major, the prisoners are breaking out.
like me can stand in an Indian agency for a year. At least you said so. Bob, but what, what is all this? What happened here? You'll know soon enough, I'm afraid. <laughs> Last night, Parrish, I sent a telegraph from the railhead. A reply from Washington has just come back. Instructions to place you under arrest for court martial. Sergeant, take charge of your prisoner. This Howell is a general's daughter, Mr. Weber. The words court martial should be mentioned only in a whisper. Will you explain this to me, Mr. Weber? He came here and openly insulted me. I had Indian prisoners, dangerous renegades under discipline. He went among them, stirred them up into an outbreak, and finally refused to allow his troops to stop the escape. After all we talked about. I've heard his version of it. Now listen to mine. I don't need to hear it. Mr. Weber, will you tell the escort we're returning to the fort? The pleasure, sir. Immediately. Sorry, sir. Sitting Bull, come. Make war. Leave me with my grief. death chant of the women. Listen to the war cries of the chiefs. Give me your counsel, mighty one. Must there be war? Is this land not big enough for all people? Guide me now, O oh God of my people. War? Or peace, war, or peace. We can have war or peace out there, Mr. President. It'll depend on how we treat the Indians. You were called here to explain your conduct at the Red Rock Agency. Nothing more, Parrish. All I did was try to prevent a slaughter. The tribunal thought enough of that defense to recommend a dishonorable discharge. Well, why didn't the tribunal try Weber? Because the Bureau got rid of Weber. And don't yell at me. I'm sorry, sir. All I have to do now is sign this discharge. Then you can go up and down the land spouting your ideas. Being a civilian, you'll be under no army discipline. And discipline seems to be the thorn in your side. Sit down. You had a brilliant military career ahead of you, Parrish. Youngest colonel in my command. Medal of Honor and well earned. Out west, I thought you'd go to the top. Just what are you trying to do? Get yourself demoted all the way down? May I speak freely, sir? Go ahead. You don't settle Indian troubles by shooting Sitting Bull's son in the back. I know that. I suppose you have a plan to make the Indian grow flowers around his teepee. We're dealing with the whole Sioux Nation. For a thousand years, these people have roamed this country from Oklahoma to Canada, from Minnesota to the Tetons. 10,000 braves, seven nations. They're a proud people. They'd be fighting us now with every drop of blood that was in them, but for one thing. What's that? Sitting Bull. 
their spiritual leader. And the man that they look up to even more than Crazy Horse and the fighting chiefs. Sitting Bull alone is holding these people in check. Why? Maybe it's because he knows that the next war will be the end of his people. Mr. President, bring Sitting Bull here to Washington. Treat him with the dignity and the respect that he deserves. And prove to him that our treaties mean something. That they're not just words on paper. Do you think you could get Sitting Bull to come here to a council? I can try. That is, if my hide's not hung on a fence by my superior officers the minute I set foot in Dakota. Our Chinese friends would call that a Chokji. What do your Indians call it? Medicine, sir. Heap big medicine. Well, that's what'll get you over the top of army orders, Captain. Captain. In the interest of army discipline, I'm reducing your rank. Very good. Your trouble in the Sioux territory so far has been a tea party. But now there's something else waiting there for you. What's that, sir? A rush in the Black Hills. They've discovered gold. No! 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 Imagine a dirty red skin trying to steal our claim. What do we do with him? Give her a shovel, let her bury him. And now another kind comes. This one wants gold. He is worse than the long knives and the blue coats. This one brings his women. He shoots without orders from his chiefs. He kills game he cannot eat. He fouls the clear water. He has come to stay. Drive him out! While well, they're still game, drive them back! Wise as you are, Sitting Bull, put on the war paint. Yes, well, the war paint! Speak, Sitting Bull. Give us counsel. When a man draws his arrow at an enemy, he must shoot. When I dip my fingers in the war paint, it will mean war. But this I counsel you. Gather all the nations together before you draw the first arrow. It will seem easy to drive back the men who want the yellow stones. But if we fight them, we must fight the long knives, their soldiers. So this I counsel you. Send runners to all the nations of the Sioux, to the Cheyenne, to the Crow who have been our enemies. Send runners to all our cousins. Send them now, crazy horse. Gather all our armies. We will make sure our boys strong before we fit the arrow. <laughs> Get to my quarters? Yes, sir. Captain, too, did you notice? Yes, we heard about it. 
What's all this? County fair? Miners, prospector. My old friend Yellow here. There's quite an army he's captured. There. Oh! Captain. Can we go away somewhere where we can? Bob. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Hi, honey. Wasn't even worth the ride. Just a few miserable prisoners. The best. Major. Oh, I'm sorry. Captain Parrish. I'd like to present my fiance, Charles Wentworth. You, Charles Wentworth, the war correspondent? That's right. I've heard a great deal about you, sir. I guess everyone has. So you're starting at the top again. Could uh, you let me in on that? It's a private joke. Are you looking for a war out here, Mr. Wentworth? My paper thinks the West is a tinderbox. Maybe I can cheat you out of a war. See how good you are at another contest at the same time. I want to see those prisoners. Yes, sir. He's going to be a bad loser. I didn't want him to find out this way. Open up. I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. You speak English? No, sir. I never learned that lingo. Well, what do you think you're speaking now? Long knife. What's your name? Black slave who escaped from white heathen. That's in Sioux. And what is it in Long Knife? Sam. You know Sitting Bull Sam? I've been a friend of the great chief Sitting Bull for many years, sir. Could you take me to him? Where I goes, they goes. That's right. I'll take all of you out of here. You got a bargain. We didn't expect to see the sun again, sir. I'll be right back. <laughs> the military tribunal reduced Paris to captain. But that may not be enough this time. One step out of line and so help me, I'll break that man down to wheelbarrow fatigue. You'll get my permission first. Of course, Colonel. Of course, sir. Captain Parrish reporting, sir. An important report to make to you. Alone. Just one minute, Captain, from the CIC himself, sir. If you please, Colonel. Very good. This better not be more of your insubordination, Parrish. Don't push my friendship for you too far. I'd like to request the release of the five prisoners that were just brought in, sir. The release? Just to explain it. You carry powerful credentials. Chokji is a Chinese word for it. Big passport to anywhere. I will carry you straight to a scalping knife. Why do you want those prisoners? To get me through the scalping knives. To Sitting Bull's camp. You picked yourself a nice, soft assignment. I'll be leaving right after dark, sir. The least I can say to you is good luck. Thank you very much, sir. Say goodbye. Come on in, Parrish. I was just leaving. Wait, Charlie. I think you two owe each other a talk. I don't think he's too smart leaving us alone. There's no reason why he shouldn't. We're going to be married the minute we go to Boston. What's that old saw about marry in haste, repent at leisure? There's no haste about this. I've known Charlie Wentworth since school days. You were the only hasty one. I regret that funny. You better keep this. It didn't work. It has no meaning for me. It might remind you. Remind me? Remind me of dust, sweat, horse lice, barracks? Yes, all of that. 
It might remind you of a man who once loved you. Charlie's in love with me. And he can give you the parties and the theaters and the clothes, is that it? Yes. Yes, that's part of it. Can he give you this? Maybe so, Captain. Maybe so. We, uh, we rode up here yesterday. Something special about the scenery, Kathy? The sunset. It's always so beautiful from here. Not wondering about someone out there in the big empty spaces, are you? You hear from your newspaper? Yes, three or four days ago. I'm relieved of this assignment. At my own discretion. Three or four days ago? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I was sort of waiting developments. Just what are you waiting for, Charlie? Why can't we go back east at once? Well, there might be some news breaking here yet. News? Is news more important than our marriage? You know it isn't. Parish might be back any day. Oh? I still think there's news in here. Forget Bob Parrish. I could forget him very easily, Kathy. from your great white chief. Speak. I came to hold counsel with you, Sitting Bull. White man speaks with many tongues, all of them twisted. I came from the great white chief of all Long Knives. Ah! I say kill him! Call this mad dog off. He wants blood, let him fight me the Indian way. It is his right. Let it be then the Indian way.
I came to hold counsel. I will listen to the words of your chief. I have wanted peace. I pray for peace. There have been battles. But when the white soldiers win a battle, they call it victory. When the Indians win, they call it massacre. Great chief, will you listen to the words of my chief? Speak. Move your braves across the little river. My chief, too, has many soldiers. They will come and they'll stop on their side. But neither army must strike a blow while you come to the great white chief of the big council. I will say yes to this meeting. What is your plan, Sitting Bull? My braves will hold their arrows, but your chief must come here. He will meet me between the two armies in the open country. You mean bring the president here? If this meeting fails, then both armies will come together. The chiefs in the middle will die first. This is the Indian way. My chief is many days. I will give him time. Many braves are here now. More are coming. I will hold them until the full moon. I can't promise the president will come here, Sitting Bull. When the moon fills up, he must be here. It's what Sitting Bull wants. I couldn't change his mind. You can't ask the President of the United States to come out here and sit under a tree with an Indian. Grant's a soldier. He'll understand. Can you send a message to him right away, sir? Tonight? Of course. It's almost hopeless. Maybe. But it could save us a war. All right. I'll have it sent. You get some rest. Thank you, sir. Captain. Hi. Glad to see you back. Your fiance doesn't look any too pleased. Any news? Will war be declared? Declared? It's already on. Charlie's talking to you as a newspaper correspondent. Uh, you look as if it's been kind of tough going. Three days and nights in the saddle might be tough on a reporter. Here in the Army, it's just routine. Charlie's no stranger to a uniform. He was a major in the last war. A major? What do you know about that? About rank again. <laughs> you know, under other circumstances, I could like him.
your news, Captain? No. Nothing. It ain't all bad, Captain. We still got a quarter moon to go. Already sitting, Bull. sure the boy's strong, wise chief. I haven't given the word. The moon is not full. The white man is not watching that moon. He is ready to move. The golden miners more and more come closer. Give me the word to move against these miners. One spark will start the prairie burning. Spark! I will throw a thousand torches. When the time is ripe, I will light your torches. You're getting banjoed watching that moon, Captain. Yeah. Well, I was a fool to ever think Grant would leave Washington to come out here. Looks like we missed, Sam. That dance they're having might be fun, Captain. Yeah. Might be. Sam, there's no sense riding a dead horse any longer. You've been a good friend. If you want to put a feather in your hair and go back and join your Indian friends, it's all right. I'll understand. You can leave tonight. I guess I got some of that horse blood you was talking about, Captain. <laughs> you mean you're not giving up? Good. Good. Forgive me, Captain, but what about you? You gonna give up on her? She's everywhere you turn. Kathy. Just what do you want me to do? I want you to take me away from here. Are you sure that's what you want? I know what you're thinking, Charlie. I want to marry you. But, but if you don't take me away from here, I'll, I'll go alone. We'll leave together. Be ready at sunup. I'll be ready. man, Captain. You fight crazy horse. You go in the thick of Indian land. You got no fear in you. But you scared to walk up to one squaw, grab her by the hair and say, come to my tent. Hi, Parrish. Glad I ran into you. It's quite a detour you made. 
Well, I just wanted to say goodbye. I'm leaving for the railhead at daylight with Kathy. What am I supposed to do? Wish you good luck? Well, that's the usual thing. And good luck. stupid thing, and you know it. Is that what you came here for? You don't love Charlie Wentworth. Let me go. You know you don't. Do I have to call my father, or, or will you leave? I'm going to stop you from leaving one way or another. You can't. Believe me, you can't. room. Urgent. Yes, sir. It's from him, all right. Here it is, sir. Mm. Top secret codes. Change them every week. Get rid of them. You men wait outside. Sorry. No one enter this room. No one, you understand? Very well, sir. Well, sir. Looks like you win. Approve parish plan. Set the meeting with Sitting Bull. Struck, field, command, full secrecy. Signed, U.S. Grant, President. <laughs> well, we better get busy. Look, sir. See if you approve of this plan. Sergeant, inside. The deal's on, Sam. You head for Sitting Bull. Send word ahead every chance you get. And you, sir? I'm going forward with Cusher. You'll find us. As easy as find a herd of buffaloes. Second best man is one. Well, I thought you newspaper men lived by a code. Code of honor? You got that wrong. But if you think I've taken dishonorable advantage of you over Kathy, we can settle that one, too. Let's skip that. There's something else I had in mind. What about a newspaper man never running out on a story? What story? The biggest story you've ever had a chance to cover. Are you serious? President Grant's coming out here. Grant? To sit under a tree and hold a council for peace with Sitting Bull. So that's it. You're forgetting, Parrish. I could telegraph that story in without interrupting a single plan for the wedding. Yes, you could. But that information's top military secret. Telegraph it and you'll see me put against a wall in front of a firing squad. Do what you think's best. Oh, great spirit, now I come to ask for strength. The war paint is ready. Give us strength and courage. If the battle must come, if 
will be the last night. Colonel. Sealed, sir. Sealed. You may move out when ready. Very good, sir. Scott's out. Sam? Sinbull got to work, Captain. The hatch is buried. Fine. But there's another kind of trouble out there, sir. I passed through the miners' camps. Dozens of them. All of them got guns. And they're all on the prod, looking for engines. What's that for, Captain? That's Custer calling for his officers. Get a good view of the soup camp from that position. Very good, sir. Your orders were to hold here, sir. That'll be enough, Captain. Captain Benteen, you'll proceed as rear guard to Major Reno. All right, gentlemen, move out. Very good, sir. I'd advise you not to move so close, sir. Captain Paris, did you read General Howell's orders? Yes, sir. And you know those orders transferred you back under my command. You also know more about these miners than anyone else. I'm giving you an order to clear them out of this immediate area. You'll be responsible for their safety. But my place is here. Captain, are you refusing an order? 
No, sir. Hey, Bob! Get the truth from out of Yes, sir. Courier just came up with a mail. It was a letter from Kathy. She asked me to give you this. Would you like to read it? No. Best man was winning all the time, Bob. I knew it. You thought I was a fool to leave her back there at the fort. But it wasn't me riding away from Kathy. It was you. Good luck. Gentlemen, I was just thinking. If the Indians should attack, this is not a position I would choose to hold. As a civilian, Colonel Custer, might I have a word in this? Naturally. Captain Parrish was certain, sir, that the Indians had no plan to attack. Mm, maybe not. I intend to swing off here. Major Reno will hold at the Little Bighorn. Captain Benteen will join him as planned. That force will be the anvil. We'll cut through the hills, hit the river well above Major Reno and his men. We'll be the hammer. The Indians will then be between us. If anything should go wrong, if they should attack, the hammer will strike the anvil and heaven help anything that's in between. But Parrish says there are thousands of Indians, sir. Many more than your scouts have reported. Mr. Wentworth, Captain Parrish is notorious for his overestimate of all facts. Gentlemen, mount your troops. The scouts will ride the ridges. We are moving forward. Soldiers, come very close. Many horse soldiers. It's a plan. The great white chief is coming, but first he sends many braves and wise leaders. 
We are at peace. And the general. What's in those barrels? Engine bait, Captain. Engine bait. Bring them up. Wait a minute, fella. If anybody interferes, I'll break a few heads. are moving too close this way. A word has been given. We wait for the chief. Yellow hair scouts. Your war. Dakota!
their army at Long Notch. Where are they? Down river. Trapped like these. Fighting.
Hey, dialect men, we will not scout brave men. Oh! Engines celebrate big wins, sir. They're celebrating the greatest disaster they'll ever see. General Terry's army's only a day's ride from here. General Terry, quick. Dispatches. Sir. What is it? Sir, we beg to report Colonel Custer's troop was completely wiped out. It was a massacre, sir. Our troop and Major Enos were completely cut to pieces. Where was this? When? Little Big Horn, sir. Late, yesterday. Order, General Assembly. Take care of these men. General Assembly. Chiefs, the long knives will come again with foot soldiers. The fighting is not over with one victory. May I speak, Sitting Bull? We are strong here. Let them come again. The white man's army will run like antelope before us. I say, go out and find them. May I have one word in this council? What is your wish, Sitting Bull? Hear what the split tongue has to say. Then let the young braves kill him. I have not spoken with the split tongue, Sitting Bull. The great white chief doesn't know of this fight. Yellow hair advanced without orders. How am I to believe this? It is my word. I knew their plans. I saw their orders. Did I come here as a prisoner? Did I come here of my own free will? Speak. This victory today was nothing. When the sun rises tomorrow, you'll see an army ten times that size. Twenty times. There's a great general moving this way. To the south lies the hot, dead country. To the setting sun, the big mountains. To the rising sun, the long knife's towns. Where would you have my people go? There's only one way to escape the army that's moving here. I will show you. No. You will lead us. If this is a trick, your death will not be swift.
Well, there it is. Through the long night, you have spoken many words of wisdom. You have kept your word. Then I'll say goodbye. You'd better stay with the people you know best, Sam. Is that an order, Cap? That's an order. You will go back to your own people now? Yes. No harm will come to you for what you have done? The great white chief will understand what I have done. Go then. I will never forget you, my son. The man will remember Custer. Horses, yo! Who's left? sir. What are you doing here? Where are the Indians? They're gone. They went through your lines in the night, sir. That's impossible. I led them. I knew our army's plans. Captain, you're wounded. Let's hope for your sake it's affected your mind. Take charge of him. Place him under arrest. Reason to try and stop a massacre on, on both sides? My dear young lady, the court martial made the decision. I can do nothing but sign the death warrant. When will it happen? It's customary to allow a condemned man 48 hours to straighten out his affairs. I'm sorry. Shooting him, miss? Sam, he wants you to go back to your own people before you get into trouble. You know what Indians say now, miss? They say white men shoot only for an engine's gut. Why they shoot Captain Parrish, miss? Engines say because white men hate engines. Also hate Injun's friend. Injun never make meeting with white man again. Sam. Sam, there is one man that could make that very plain. I mean, sitting bull. But we only got 48 hours, miss. We could try, Sam. Oh, Sam. Right face! 
Captain Robert Parrish. Whereas, you have been found guilty of the charge of treason and sentenced to be divested of rank and executed by firing squad with all ranks present Bull, sir. Your daughter's with him. Open the gates. But, sir, they're... Carry out my orders. What is it? It's Sitting Bull, sir. Sitting Bull? It's all right. My daughter brought him here. Sitting Bull, this is my father, General Howe. Sir, may I present the President of the United States? Great White Chief, you promised the Council. Speak, Sitting Bull. For many years, I have tried to keep peace between us. A moon has not passed since many men, yours and mine, have shed their blood. For me, there is no joy in such a memory. Nor for me, Sitting Bull. That is good to hear. But then why are you now going to kill this man for treason? This man has always risked his life to bring peace between us. He risked his life when he led my people north so that there would be no more killings on both sides. For all time, the Indian will respect this man. When he left my side, I called him my son. I feared for his return. I remember his last words to me. The great white chief will understand what I have done, he said. Kill him, white chief, and your nation will destroy a patriotic son. Oh, 
only to find their mistake too late. But let him live. And through him, the Indian and the white man can sit again in peace council. Peace to friendship. <laughs> <laughs> 